All right, good uh, morning, everybody. I'm uh, pleased to be here. Uh, it's my first uh, MISP workshop, and uh, I've been working with uh, the core team on a few uh, ideas, and I'd like to share with you those ideas. So it's not from me to you. I also want to hear your, uh, your feedback, so I'm going to have a few questions for you so we can just chat about it. Uh, I'm going to talk about sightings, so about me, so I'm uh, Sebastian Trickeld. Uh, I've been developing a lot of uh, different tools. I work for a company called Devo. Uh, we do data uh, engineering, data management. Um, I'm also the lead developer of a tool called FOP. I'm giving a workshop for uh, Hacklu in two days. Uh, and I also work on various uh, other open source projects. So I've been doing this presentation listening to Professor Longhair. If you haven't heard of him, he's just amazing. So what is sighting? Uh, I'm sure everybody has seen this uh, in the um, uh, in the UI. So it's basically when you have a, a, an event and you want to know that uh, you've seen this event. So you can click here on the thumb up. Say, yep, yeah, I've seen this. It's, it looks good. Or, well, no, nope, looks bad, false positive. And you can configure a bunch of stuff. So uh, first of all, how many of you are using sightings? All right, that, that's not a lot. It's less than a third, actually. It's maybe a fourth or a fifth of the audience. So it's it's good to know. Uh, among those that are using sightings, are using the sighting time graph feature, which is just to see how many things on time are useful. All right, everybody works for a circle. Interesting. <laughs> uh, and if I am much faster of dealing with sighting if I remove the, uh, the, the, the graph feature because it can have an impact. Do you think it's, it's okay? Or uh, would you disagree with this? And then we can debate and I'm happy to debate about this. Who think it's okay? All right, thank you. <laughs> okay, you want to get the latest, but you don't necessarily need to know in the last, because I have to store everything, like, uh, and I would be much, much, much faster if I just store the, the first and the latest. You want to know the first, of course, that, that makes sense. But I was wondering if you want something in between, like, uh, how many I had last week. Mm -hmm. Okay. No, that's that's good to know. Like, uh, all right, that's that's something to consider, and maybe we can have the option and see how many are using, and and you have you are aware more than everybody here on the details of the use cases. So I'm really interested to hear that. Um, and uh, last question: uh, Who needs ACL on top of signing? It's a serious question. Like, are you okay to share to another organization that you have seen this host or this IP address? Like, who is Against or who is for? Raise your hand if you're against. Yeah. Okay. All right. No, that's again. That's that's good to know. That's exactly what I want to hear. I want to get an idea of uh, where I need to start in order to just uh, keep this project uh, moving faster and have some arguments. Now I can tell the guys. Hey, you see in the audience only one fourth is exciting. So, no, thank you. All right. Let's keep moving. Uh, so we're going to look from a MySQL point of view, uh, the storage of, of sightings. So basically, this is a, there is a sightings table here. And uh, in that case, I'm looking at all the event ID 2607 and all the sightings for that event ID. So you have different sightings here. And you have, uh, you have the organization. You have everything. So one line is one sighting. So that's how the graph is being made. It's just by looking at the single event and the, the event ID and just the graph over time. So we, if we get our attribute stored in sighting, we just get, all right, so select from that attribute what the ID is, the one that you saw before in the sighting table. That's one event. And if we store one attribute twice, it's going to make twi uh, two lines. And if we store three attributes, it's going to be stored three times. So then that's how the graph can be made. Just simple. I just wanted everybody to be on the same page here. So this is the SQL storage of, of sighting. So there's a bunch of things here, the ID, the attribute ID, even ID, organization ID, the date of the sighting, the U, UUID, the source, and the type. The type is something that's very specific to how MISP sees the sighting. 
And what I did is I wrote a, uh, a daemon. Uh, I am like, okay, I haven't written database in my life. Uh, I miss something. So how about I write a database? And uh, if I have to, I want to learn a language. And uh, which language? Rust. All right, let's do it in Rust. So basically, this is the Rust structure of of uh, the siding, and I tried to be as minimalistic as I could be, where I only store the value, which is a string, the first time we've seen it, the last time we've seen it, the source that we can define, and the source timestamp, come back and say, all right, for now I don't know what type of, of siding this is, but now I know that, oh, it's from a honeypot, and I learned that a few days later, so maybe it's interesting to know the source at some point, and I want to know when I learned about the source, because it may not be in the beginning. And of course, how many times I've seen this. So the the philosophy behind citing DB is just um, it just signings. It just signings from me. It's no more, no less than that. I just want to do signings. I don't want to do a generic database. I don't want to do anything that's like uh, over complicated. I just want to do signings from me. Uh, I was very inspired from uh, Zookeeper. Uh, Zookeeper is uh, is a way to it's it's in the Hadoop ecosystem uh, uh, and some. People say it's an algorithm for a synchronization to know where you go to your database and when. But the way I see Zookeeper is also as a key store where you can store configurations and you can say, all right, the key is a path. And then you just work with the path, which I found very, very convenient. Uh, and also, I wanted to make HTTP harder to configure than HTTPS, which means by default, I give a... Uh, a certificate that everybody has access to the private key. It's just self-signed. Self but I'm like, okay, you can change that and you can use this one. It's actually no worse than having a clear text being sent over the wire. So I'm like, okay, that's fine. It's just harder to configure HTTP for that purpose. So I'll give you an example of the uh, namespacing in signing DB. So the namespacing is just, as you can see here, the path where you have, in that case, the uh, UUID and the variable host. So that's your key. So the key can be defined in the way you want. In that case, I say, all right, I want to get the uh, UID of the organization and, and uh, the name of the variable. Or I can do, all right, I want to get all the hosts, and I'm just doing uh, all hosts, and this way I can store also all the hosts regardless of the UID of the organization. Or I can do all and also add the type here, because as you remember, in the MIS uh, SQL database, there was the type. So we could agree on a, on a structure. But at least this is not the database job to do that. Uh, it's just above. And uh, we just store all those indicators into this uh, into this uh, key. So the, the thing is, there's a lack of space for the namespace, which is on purpose. We could refine this in MISP if we want to. But at least from the database point of view, I just want the database to be very, very dumb and just store what it's been told to, to, to store. So as for the value, uh, there is a, a REST API that allows you to read and write on citing DB. Uh, so the value is sent in base64, uh, URL, and no padding. Um, and we can offer many more ways in the future, but for now, that's what works in, in the database. And uh, we provide a tool called B64 that's just going to encode this way, so then you can just give into the URL uh, this. For example, I want to store MISP as the value, and this is actually going to translate into this uh, base64 URL, no padding. So let's do a demo. So here I'm starting the daemon. So there is just a simple configuration file. Uh, let me show you that first. So you just tell uh, listen port. So I took 9999 because uh, the MISP uh, uh, modules were in 6666. So you know I didn't have any idea. Um, so in that case, I don't demonize. Um, and I just have a DBD, which is where I'm storing the data on disk, if I want to store things on disk, at the log level, and SSL configured by, true, by default with those uh, weak and public, uh, private and public keys. And now I'm just run, going to run curl on the on the database. Oh. 
So what I'm doing here is I'm uh, just doing a REST API call where I am writing here, uh, and I use the the, the 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 W for write, and this is a namespace. Foo slash bar is the namespace, and this is my value here. So I'm just going to store the value. So I get an OK as that's fine. So I'm doing that uh, four times, and now I'm I'm doing another uh, another event. Hello. So how to read? I just change here from W to R, and I just keep the rest because I'm reading from that namespace and that value. So when I read, let me do it like this. So when, I'm re when I read, I'm getting all the things you've seen in the structure, where the value is hello, the first time I've seen is that time, the last time I've seen is that time, uh, the source, and actually I've seen it only once. Now if I do it with, uh, with foo, you will see that it's going to be like three, a count of uh, uh, three, and uh, it's going to be different from the first time and the last time I've seen it. So there was just a few seconds of delta, five seconds. The source is unknown because I haven't said it. And this is a source timestamp, and I have a count of four. All right, a demo that works. Uh, so, uh, how much time do I have? A few minutes, five. Okay. Uh, so, things that uh, Signing DB does: I uh, leverage Rust, so it's already in Rust. Um, I can do multiple writes without being atomic. I don't care because in the end, in the database, I'm just adding the sum of what the things I'm having because I'm just counting. So if I was doing other things and counting, if I was like, for example, uh, writing some values, I would may have to have a delta or a diff or something or we're merging. But in my case, it's just counting. So I can just do a simple add to all the other values that are written at the same time. Uh, I'm using uh, REST hash map for now to store the namespace, so I could change it in the future, but for now it's working. Um, keys can be configured to be only in memory, or only on disk, or both, depending on what you want to do. Um, and attributes are being read automatically thanks to SERDI, which is a Rust uh, serialization uh, library. So, integration plan. So my idea for integrating this into MISP is the following. And again, my idea, I'm very open to your way of, of thinking. So we should keep the MySQL way and add signing DB as an installation dependency. Just add it. Then we have uh, import export with MySQL signing to signing DB. So we can go in both ways. Then we have signing DB side by side with MySQL. So we store in both. We store in the MySQL and in signing DB. Then we can replace <laughs> then we can replace the API, the, the API to signing DB feature by feature, so we don't break the, the MySQL. And uh, once complete, we can remove the uh, MySQL table. So the benefit is we can reduce the storage size. Uh, it's designed for MISP. It's uh, serving MISP the best we can. And we can do concurrent read and write. Um, so this is where you can download it. So please. Download that, test, open tickets, whatever, you know, I'm listening to use cases you have. And uh, at the same time, I also wrote a small thing to test and debug. I want to see the MySQL queries being done in real time. So I wrote a uh, MySQL uh, query sniffer uh, in C with lib pcap. And I have a Luajit uh, interpreter that gets all the MySQL queries. So I can do, I can use Lua to do other things. So then I was just creating CSVs every day of all the data coming to MISP. And, uh, and you know, I just wrote that for testing and I just released this because uh, it's cool and uh, maybe you can enjoy it for other purposes. So uh, with the MISP spirit, uh, MISP is writing the code and doing a spec. And I thought it was nice to also write a spec just to agree on the things. So there is a spec here uh, that you can look at and send your uh, PRs, open issues, and talk about whatever you need. All right, I'm done. So first of all, thanks. I mean, it's really great stuff. And uh, going back to one of the things that you raised uh, uh, in the beginning with those questions, uh, I, I think that the answer to most of those questions is both depending on the user you ask. So we had some discussions recently about exactly those questions. And we have some users that really want to do bulk sightings. 
and some users that are just doing reporting, for example, where they need more accuracy on who they share with and so on. So indeed, the mixed model sounds best. But instead, perhaps thinking of copying the data between the two, we should consider two systems that were both at the same time with BISP. That would take a lot of the restrictions off your back, basically, uh, but it would allow us uh, to, uh, to still maintain what we have currently for those users that do the reporting and, for example, for us that want to do the massive amount. So one of the things that would be interesting and what I'm curious about your view is uh, what uh, uh, are we missing to be able to on-demand convert between one of these systems to the other? Are we missing anything on the existing side uh, to be able to do that, to, for example, get the summary of the data out in one shot? Yeah, so basically, uh, I think I agree. We should do both uh, because we can do it and we're also learning. Like, it's uh, nobody is doing that today. Like, nobody is doing, uh, even outside of MISP, a scalable, scalable way to cite and to see everything. And we also know that citing is just beyond uh, indicators. It's not just about the indicators. It's also, like, everything you're seeing. So we don't know. And uh, I think there is nothing I'm missing today in how MISP is designed. Uh, in order to do that. The only thing I can add is just another REST call at the time where you just tore into the siding to signing DB. And that's how we could start. And it could be, I think it should be an optional thing in, in the very beginning. Like it does not matter except for those it matters. And then we can learn on who is using that really and how we can tailor. If we were doing something that everybody knew already in the past we have done, it's easy. The answer is like, oh yeah, sure. This is how it's, it's done in industry. But we also need to learn ourselves. So I think it's best to, to say, all right, it's an optional dependency. And then it's a side-by-side -side dependency. And then who knows? It doesn't matter. If we can see the story in MySQL because it's working for some users, I mean, why stop that? Because we want to stop that for uh, no good reason, right? I mean, that's how I see that. Thanks. Any other question? All right, well, thank you. <laughs>